For the video version of this podcast, please visit our YouTube channel, Daughters of the American Revolution National Headquarters. Otherwise, please enjoy this audio podcast on your favorite podcast streaming platform. This is the DAR Today podcast. I'm your host, Brooke Bullmaster Stewart, the national chair of the DAR Today podcast committee. Our Continental Congress is such an incredible event. The city is literally alive with daughters from throughout the nation, making new and rekindling existing friendships as we gather for events at our historic and sparkling DAR National Headquarters and area hotels. Our hearts soar with pride and patriotism during opening night. Community members and DAR members are recognized for exceptional accomplishments in service. Members who've only known each other virtually experience the joy of that first hug. New friends are made throughout shared interests, chats over coffee, and downtime in the hotel lobbies and lounges. Hardworking daughters make it all happen. Want to take a peek behind the page curtain? These young women are truly the fabric holding this week's events together. Catch a glimpse in this episode of some of the extraordinary women upon whom we depend for this annual special event. Whether you attend Congress this year in person or virtually, or maybe couldn't quite fit it in, but wondered how the 132nd Continental Congress played out, you will love this month's special Congress episode. And if you're like me, you're still basking in that twilight glow of this incredible celebration and daughter bonding event, marking all that is the best about our organization. And so, dear friends, sit back and enjoy as together we share very special moments with you. Still in the honeymoon phase of our recently concluded 132nd Continental Congress, it's truly amazing to think of the changes that have occurred since the NSDAR held its first Continental Congress in 1892. Spanning only three days and during the week of George Washington's birthday from February 22nd to 24th, that first annual national meeting was held at the Church of Our Father in Washington, D.C., a Universalist red brick church on the southeast corner of 13th and L Northwest. Designed by Adolf Kluss, architect of also the Eastern Market and Smithsonian Arts and Industries building, the church would be the Congress location for the next four years until attendance outgrew the church's available space. Although fewer than 100 attendees at the first Continental Congress, there were at that time over 1,300 members representing 31 states, and rather than the elaborate insignia worn today, attendees donned small yet tasteful rosettes. It was also during that first Continental Congress that our first President General, who also happened to be the First Lady of the United States, made the first public address. It would, unfortunately, also be her last, as she would pass from tuberculosis in October of 1892. Her address was as follows. I welcome you, regents and delegates of the society, to this city and to the first Congress of the Daughters of the American Revolution, with the hope and desire that your conference may be one of pleasure to yourselves, having the promise of strength and progress for the future. Congress continued to occur during that same week in February until 1904, when the date was changed to April, consistent with milder springtime weather in the nation's capital. The NSDAR bylaws require that our gathering be called the Continental Congress of the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution. The title has been used for every annual meeting of the NSDAR since the first Continental Congress, which of course is modeled upon and named after the original Continental Congress that met during the Revolutionary War era. I like to imagine the look on the faces of those first 100 attendees if they could see us now. They would be so proud and a little in awe of the amazing tenacity and lasting power of hardworking daughters. During the week of the 132nd Continental Congress, our President General, Pamela Edwards Rouse Wright, along with her executive board and many DAR members, held a special ceremony in celebration of a DAR member who was a changemaker in our organization. 
Monday, June 26, 2023, DC daughter Lena Santos Ferguson was recognized with a tribute plaque memorial in the Memorial Garden at DAR National Headquarters. The ceremony took place after the annual Daughters Tribute Wreath Lang Ceremony. Mrs. Ferguson was instrumental in creating changes within DAR to help the organization become more diverse, inclusive, and supportive of its members of color. Her struggle to become a member of DAR lasted from 1980 to 83, after her initial application was not advanced by a DAR chapter. After she became a DAR member at large, an agreement was reached in 1984 that resulted in DAR revising its national bylaws to bar discrimination by any of its chapters on the basis of race or creed. Another major goal of the agreement was to reconnect black families to lost Revolutionary War heritage, and as a result of Mrs. Ferguson's advocacy, DAR started a project to focus more research on Revolutionary War patriots of color. The research that began in the 1980s expanded into the long-term Forgotten Patriots project to identify African Americans, Native Americans, and individuals of mixed heritage who supported the struggle for independence. This effort led to a series of different publications on the topic, including the 874-page research book entitled Forgotten Patriots, African American, and American Indian Patriots in the Revolutionary War. Additionally, at Mrs. Ferguson's proposal, DAR began scholarships supporting students of color in the Washington, D.C. community studying nursing or physical therapy. For more than two decades, Mrs. Ferguson served as the national vice chair overseeing these DAR scholarships, taking great pride in awarding them annually. In Mrs. Ferguson's honor, DAR renamed the scholarship in 2023 as the DAR Lena Ferguson Scholarship. The scholarship award was increased to $5,000, and it is given to two nursing students attending the University of the District of Columbia. Details regarding this scholarship can be found on the DAR Scholarship public webpage at dar.org forward slash DAR Lena Ferguson Scholarship. Mrs. Ferguson grew up in Plainville, Connecticut and moved to Washington, D.C. in 1950. Her mother was the daughter of a white Maine sea captain and a black woman from Virginia. Her immigrant father was of black and Portuguese ancestry from Cape Verde. Her patriot ancestor, Jonah Gay, supported the Revolutionary War effort as a member of the Committee of Correspondence of Friendship in Maine. After initially joining as a member at large, Mrs. Ferguson then joined a D.C. chapter that later disbanded, and she continued her dedication through the Margaret Wheaton chapter in Washington, D.C., until she passed away in 2004. Mrs. Ferguson was an active member of DAR for more than 20 years. We hope that as you visit our beautiful DAR buildings in D.C., you can take a moment to stop at this plaque honoring a wonderful woman and a member who changed DAR for the better. I think everyone can agree that our annual Continental Congress truly nourishes the body and the soul. From breakfasts and lunches to some truly dazzling dinners and wonderfully informative business meetings, not only are our appetites sated, but our souls are inspired by captivating speakers and time spent seated adjacent daughters from around the country and the world. We make new friends, brainstorm new projects, and sit in awe of all that daughters accomplish individually and collectively. It's a week of education, reflection, and motivation that inspires us to return to our chapters with a renewed sense of meaning and purpose. In this episode, we'd like to highlight a few of the events of the 132nd Continental Congress, giving you just a taste, and we hope that will whet your appetite for more. Like a train picking up steam, in addition to the pro forma registration, Monday and Tuesday finds many daughters at social Congress kickoff events, Tuesday, your host attended three different events, beginning with the National Chairman's Brunch, followed in the afternoon by the California Tea, a must for this California daughter, and then in the evening, the National Vice Chairman's Dinner. The club events are a wonderful way to start the week, as daughters are afforded time to reconnect, give lots of hugs before the busy week begins. Other clubs that meet early include the National Officers Club, the Vice President's General Club with this year's cleverly themed Breakfast at Tiffany's event. So fun, reminding us that we come to DAR for the service 
and we stay for the friendships. The Patriotism Luncheon occurring Wednesday is undoubtedly one of the most popular events of the week. This special luncheon is hosted by the Powerhouse DAR Service for Veterans, DAR Project Patriot, and the National Defense Committees, which collectively honor our veterans, those currently serving in the armed forces and dedicated volunteers. We're always astounded by the amount of time, devotion, and love these volunteers bring to their activities, supporting our active duty military and veterans. In addition to the Patriotism Luncheon, on Wednesday were the Heritage Club events, both a breakfast and a lunch, with all guests in attendance receiving the most lovely, soft coral pink colored embroidered pashmina, truly a beautiful gift from our President General as a token of appreciation for everyone's dedication to fundraising. Other events on Wednesday included the Mississippi and Alabama Southern Sunrise Breakfast, the West Virginia Breakfast, the Historian General's Forum, and the Period Room Open House events, featuring many of our state's historical treasures as just part of the DAR Museum's vast collections. But that's not all. There was also the not-to-be-missed Texas Tea in the afternoon. What a glamorous event, with the receiving line winding its way through the lobby, welcoming excited daughters eager to enter. So Andy Tart, tell me about the Texas Tea. The Texas Tea is a great way to start your Continental Congress experience. You have all the fabulous Texas daughters, and we come here to this great ballroom to be together and just celebrate. This year, we're celebrating Pamela Rouse Wright. So, if you love Texas and you love things big, come to the Texas Tea. Thank you so much. And then Wednesday night was all glamour, sparkling sequins, and beautiful smiles for our opening night. And what a night it was! Be sure to watch the live stream on our national YouTube channel. Thursday featured informative business sessions punctuated by the Historic Preservation and Units Overseas Luncheons. Mary Coik from the American Battlefield Trust provided the keynote presentation for the Historic Preservation event and the accomplishments of the Historic Preservation Project contest winners from the state and chapter levels were revealed. If not attending the Historic Preservation Luncheon, daughters might find themselves at the perennially popular Units Overseas Luncheon and International Bazaar. Look for a segment later in this podcast with more details about this international DAR chapter tour. Thursday is also the date of the Virginia Luncheon and the New York State Luncheons. Who can choose? Thursday evening was a whirlwind of education awards as the American History Committee recognized both exceptional students and teachers for their accomplishments. Again, be sure to watch the live stream video online if you missed any of this incredible night. On Friday, the morning business session was followed by the rebranded Education Luncheon, celebrating the American Indian, Community Classroom, DAR School, and DAR Scholarship Committees. Friday night found us at the very elegant Founders Club dinner held at the equally impressive Willard Hotel. This dinner recognizes those who've made provisions for future bequests to the National Society by naming them in their will or other annuity. What a commitment is shown by these members demonstrating their desire to maintain their support of the Society well into the future. But Friday evening, oh boy, what a night that was, our Sparkle and Service Committee Showcase. This was a free come-and-go event designed to highlight the ways our DAR committees sparkle in service and introduce daughters to ways they can become more involved in the work of our dynamic mission areas. Your own DAR Today podcast committee enjoyed hosting a table and meeting so many of you. We heard from so many who enjoy the podcast, some who had just recently heard of the podcast, and from others there were questions like, What's a podcast? And so to this I say, challenge accepted, as we strive to reach more and more of you with this podcast episode. Saturday, July 1st found most of us voting online via our mobile devices. What a streamlined and time-saving change from the past. And during our morning business session, we listened to reports from many of the state regions. 
How exciting and inspiring to hear and see what the state societies are accomplishing. And then all eyes were on the junior membership luncheon that afternoon, which celebrated all the junior member accomplishments and their fundraising efforts. The highlight, of course, is the announcement of this year's Outstanding Juniors and Pages. 2023 marked the 60-year anniversary of the Outstanding Junior Member Contest. Each chapter participates by selecting an Outstanding Junior from their membership. I do hope your chapter took part. The contest is an important tool to acknowledge and encourage our junior members through recognition of the time and talent they provide. The accomplishments of these young ladies are simultaneously both astonishing and humbling. We're so fortunate to have these young women carrying forward the banner of DAR. The future of our society is in good hands. And are you a sustaining supporter of DAR? Then perhaps you joined us at the Sustaining Supporter Swanky Pop-Up Lounge Saturday afternoon. What a thrill that was the dancing, lots of laughs, and camaraderie. Truly, the week reaches a climax for many of our members with Saturday's National Defense Evening as our hearts swell with pride and patriotism. In addition, the all-male quintet singing group called Veritas almost quite literally brought the house down. It was fantastic. This year's memorial service was so beautiful and inspiring. It was truly a testament to those who have come before us. One of the highlights of the morning was a beautiful solo of Ave Maria sung by DAR member Jeannie Josbury, accompanied on the piano by Paige Rumble. Ms. Rumble and Ms. Josbury played many songs throughout the morning that really took our breath away. Thank you so much, ladies, for blessing us with your talents, and we just want to express appreciation for our Chaplain General Virginia Langelbach for all that she did to make Sunday morning of Continental Congress a very special time. And shortly afterwards, in a short business session and installation, those admirable women embarking on key leadership roles in our society were installed as officers. Well, nourished in body, soul, and mind is how every member leaves Continental Congress. From breakfast to lunches to ice cream socials sponsored by clubs, states, and the national organization, we're fed, we're inspired, and we leave D.C. after a week of amazing interactions, excited to return home with renewed enthusiasm and ready to apply all that we've experienced. I'm Michelle Field from the Hollywood chapter in California. And hello, I'm Lauren Booker from the Garden State of New Jersey, the Colonel Thomas Reynolds chapter. I'm Catherine Bartunek from Greenwich, Connecticut, and I'm the Kansas page. Amanda Carew, Nancy Horton Davis chapter out of Dallas, Texas. My name's Courtney Dozier. I'm in the Mariah Mitchell chapter in Virginia. And what time do you wake up, Michelle? 7 a.m. What time do you wake up, Lauren? 4 a.m. 7 a.m. Oh, while I'm here, about 6 a.m. Normally about 7 o'clock. This week it's been about 6, 6.30. And single married kids? I am single. 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 I'm married and I have a bonus daughter. I'm married with two beautiful little girls. 
Do you currently have a career? I do. I work in a business management firm uh, in Los Angeles that works with celebrities, uh, actors, musicians, and influencers. Yes, I am a mental health professional, specifically a therapist and a clinical psychology trainee. I am business manager for Microsoft's cloud operations and innovation team transitioning to taking over security projects in our production data centers. And, uh, I wear a lot of hats, but I'm a senior project manager for a clinical laboratory and a chalk couture designer on the set. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And what do you do for fun? I love just going around LA and finding the coolest hotspot, going to the park, all sorts of fun stuff, the beach. I'm currently reading historical fiction and traveling to different locations to research for my own book. That's wonderful. I actually sail in regattas on Tuesdays in Greenwich and I play golf. For fun, oh gosh, I scrapbook, I do chalk tour, and um, adventure with my husband. Oh, for fun. I love to play board games or Nancy Drew computer games, and honestly, I love to check out breweries with my husband. And what might surprise us about being a Congress page? It is not as hard as you think to find white dresses. Well, I think one thing is how fun it's been. It's been a lot of hard work, but it's been a lot of fun and just making new friends. It's hard for, it's hard for drivers to stay quiet. <laughs> Thank you. That's a really tough question, but probably that we're not always on duty. It may look like we are, but we do take breaks occasionally. And what might surprise us to find out about being a Congress page? How many awesome lifelong friends you're going to make and how so tired you're going to be by the end of it. But worth it. Thank you. You've heard of working nine to five? <laughs> Maybe back in the day, but that certainly isn't the schedule of today's modern DAR page. Nine to five would be a walk in the park for one of our amazing young women in white. These fellow daughters work long, grueling hours, and to be honest, those of us who haven't paged have no idea the commitment and energy these ladies in white devote to DAR. Many have full-time jobs and young families, and they sacrifice their personal lives to volunteer and serve at state and national functions to ensure that you and I have a sparkling good time. The first mention of Pages was in a Congress program in 1897. Thirteen young women, one from each of the thirteen original colonies, were chosen for this special role. The Pages Committee followed soon after, and the core of young women in white would grow to include members from all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and units overseas. If you're between the ages of 18 and 40, and a member in good standing, you too can be a page. So what's up with these white dresses? It's so that the pages are instantly identifiable. We see a woman in white, we know they're a hardworking page. And during Congress, you'll find them hiking DC streets from one venue to another. Following a page on the sidewalks of D.C. is a surefire way to ensure you're headed in the right direction for the Units Overseas Luncheon or Genealogical Records Workshop when it seems the map app on your phone only guides you in circles. Did you know that the pages at Congress serve at the invitation of the President General? These are truly exceptional women, and at Congress they work non-stop to ensure all goes smoothly. The list of page responsibilities is lengthy, but includes providing pageantry in the processional by carrying flags and forming the honor guard. They serve as exit pages, floor pages, credential and registration pages, house committee pages, personal pages. You can recognize them by the silver and gold lettering on their sashes. There are flower pages, marshal pages, platform pages. The list goes on and this name's just a few. There are so many more. In fact, the, the podcast just isn't long enough to list them all. Pages are amazing young women who are willing to tirelessly serve. Up early and in bed late, they're full of energy and tons of patience, seamlessly bringing it all together with grace and an ever-present smile. And they know everything. Serving as a page at Congress allows these hardworking women to forge lifelong friendships, pinky partnerships, and an incredible support group based on service and patriotism. I do hope when you see these ladies in white that you recognize them and thank them. Don't ever forget that there are daughters and sisters in service, and they make it all come together. And because of them, we all sparkle just a little bit brighter. We'd like to end this segment with one last page interview conducted by our own DAR Today podcast, National Vice Chair, Lead Writer and Editor Chris Hertzleffler. 
Single, married, have kids? I'm married and I have three fur babies. Wow. So you are a busy mom. I sure am. <laughs> Do you currently have a career as well? I am. I'm in the U.S. Army. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you We're, for your support. <laughs> absolutely. We are all about that. For yes, sure. I am. Me too. And um, what do you do? Do you have time to do anything for fun outside of DAR and your work? And You know, it's always a tough thing to find the time, but always having time with my husband and my dogs. I do a lot of dog training, dog rescuing. So whenever I'm not doing transports or helping out with DAR, um, I just try to volunteer anywhere else that I can, like Meadow Garden, which is our state project where we have our museum. So we absolutely love doing that whenever we can. What might surprise us about being a Congress page? Something we don't know. Well, as a flag page, because all the pages have different duties, as a flag page, we we really carry around this awesome book that has everything that you possibly could need in it. So the program, we do a lot of numbering. We, we have to know everything about the flags. And then you also got to know that for flag pages, we walk around with this around our necks. So that's the easiest way to identify a flag page. Uh, and then we always have our gloves on. If we don't have our gloves on, we're in trouble. Those are really good things to know. I didn't know any of that. So thank you so much. Thank you for all that you do. And thank you for being here to help us out at Congress. We Anytime? really appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. The Units Overseas Luncheon and International Bazaar highlights all the fabulous DAR chapters that are overseas. These hardworking chapters do the work of DAR and many other works of charity where they're located. The luncheon is an opportunity to hear what the chapters have been doing, and the bazaar is a way for them to make money to fund this work. Your attendance at this event truly does make a difference to the work being accomplished by our Units Overseas chapters, all of which are restricted in their fundraising efforts given the specific tax regulations of their resident countries. Your purchase at the bazaar may help a Units Overseas chapter provide books and supplies for indigenous schools. It may help a chapter's preservation of a war memorial through the purchase of cleaning supplies. It may fund the purchase of material and batting for a chapter to make supportive chest pillows for women recovering from breast cancer surgery. And it may assist another chapter with their boots on the ground work at the Lanzel Regional Medical Center and two local Fisher houses. United in Purpose, U.S.-based and units overseas daughters can intertwine the ribbons of the bow of service and friendship and join hands as together we're celebrating Stars and Stripes forever at home and abroad. But let's talk more about what was offered for sale at this year's bazaar. At the overflowing tables that lined the room, we saw delicious chocolates, spicy German mustard, and snappy nutcrackers from the Palatinate chapter in Germany, decadent rum cakes in several flavors from Nassau at the Bahama chapter's booth, coronation souvenirs, teapot cozies, tea bags, and shortbread at sales tables for each of the St. James and Walter Hines Page chapters from the United Kingdom, sumptuous French silk scarves ready to adorn our necks from the Rochambeau chapter in France, and the insanely popular buttery soft Italian leather gloves presented by the Pax Romana chapter in Italy, Australian kangaroo items that nearly jumped into our shopping bags from the Captain James Cook chapter in Australia, exquisite handbags crafted from Japanese kimonos at the Sasebo chapter table, moose pins, maple candy, and sparkling maple leaf jewelry aplenty at booths sponsored by the Bighton, New Caledonia, Pacific Dogwood, and Upper Canada chapters from Canada, bottles of fragrant vanilla and spicy Mexican hot sauce from Thomas Paine chapter from Mexico, beautifully painted Spanish fans and poppy pins hand crocheted by España chapter members from Spain, and South Seas seashell ornaments, <laughs> how's that for a tongue twister, for your holiday decorating from the Mariana Island chapter in Guam. One of the most exciting things to happen at this year's Congress has been the fact that Units Overseas has, for the first time in perhaps 25 years, presented an outstanding junior. 
Last year, the Walter Hines Page chapter in the United Kingdom endorsed the application of their member and chapter secretary, Caroline McWilliams, for the Units Overseas Outstanding Junior Contest. We had the great opportunity to have a quick chat with Ms. McWilliams after the Units Overseas Luncheon. I joined DAR in 2017. My mother had always said we were eligible, and I got tired of hearing we're eligible, so I just joined, and then she joined after I did. Um, I grew up in Scotland on the West Coast, really, really beautiful. Went to university in St. Andrews on the other side of the country, and I'm in the Walter Hines Page chapter based in London. Wonderful, and I hear congratulations are in order, as you are one of the first outstanding juniors for units overseas, correct? Yeah. What I is it so? <laughs> what is it like being a junior in in another country? It's hard at times. Um, there there aren't a huge number of juniors overseas, but we are growing. Um, we have ladies transferring in. We're working on recruitment. Um, but for a lot of our juniors, they're studying abroad. They've just moved for work. They don't know a lot of people. And so we aim to provide a space where they can meet new friends, have fun, try new cultural things. Um, so in the UK, we are, we do everything from ice skating at Somerset House at Christmas to Scottish reeling evenings. And we, th we throw in cocktails quite a lot. <laughs> um, but for me, it's, it's fairly straightforward as I've always lived in the UK. Um, but I really try to make it as easy as possible for the ladies who are moving there. That's wonderful. And what do you do there for work or study? Yes, well, I am completing my PhD in modern history just now, and I work in education part-time. So I run skills classes for undergraduate students, and I teach a little bit in history. Mm. Um, so we'll, we'll see where I go, but hopefully into the heritage sector and into historic preservation. Did you know Units Overseas covers international members belonging to 19 chapters spread across 11 countries and one U.S. territory? Since 1897, when the first Units Overseas chapter was organized, new chapters have exploded on the scene, advancing DAR's mission of historic preservation, education, and patriotic endeavor and they're eager to welcome new friends. Overseas chapters are actively seeking new and associate members to share dazzling ideas and clever endeavors promoting our society's mission. We'll be showcasing the Units Overseas Committee early next year on this podcast, but we just wanted to talk a bit more in detail about this wildly popular luncheon that happens during our annual Continental Congress and what exactly it means to our overseas chapters. We're so happy to partner with them to support their efforts as they are our sisters overseas. We leave you today with this quote by Nora Ephron. Above all, be the heroine of your life, not the victim. This podcast was written and produced by our incredible team of writers and editors, but special gratitude is expressed today for the incredibly creative Paula Macko to True Lewis Laura Marriott to Chris Hertz Leffler, Allison Manila, Alicia Segal, and Sherry Stein, and a very special thanks to Mrs. Etta Reed for her generosity. And we are, as always, so grateful for President General Pamela Edwards Rouse Wright and Historian General Suzanne Heskey for their constant guidance, to Elizabeth Partridge, Viva Scott, to Bren Landon, and the ever-patient Amanda DeFrancesco for all their help this month. Well, thanks for listening, and be well, dear friends. Let's celebrate the stars and stripes forever, and remember, with all of your ancestors behind you, you are the result of the love of thousands. The National Society Daughters of the American Revolution is a nonprofit, nonpolitical volunteer women's service organization dedicated to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, and securing America's future through better education for children. Members are all lineal descendants of those who supported the cause of independence in the Revolutionary War. For more information, please visit DAR.org. This is the DAR Today podcast.